السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته قال الله تبارك وتعالى في الكلام المجيد والفرقان الحميد فوز بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله ملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد What the program today is first of all I'm going to recite the the ayah 93 to 103 93 to 103 give the translation a little bit of explanation inshallah and after that we'll have word to word translation and then go for our usual commitment but first the recitation translation and tafsir a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillah rahman rahim وإذا أخذنا ميثاقكم ورفعنا فوقكم الطور خذوا ما آتيناكم بقوة واسمعوا قالوا سمعنا وعصينا واشربوا في قلوبهم والعجل بكفرهم قل بعس ما يأمركم به إيمانكم إن كنتم مؤمنين قل إن كانت لكم الدار الآخرة عند الله خالصة من دون الناس فتمنوا الموت إن كنتم صادقين وَنَيَّ تَمَنَّهُ أَبَدًا بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ عَيْدِهِمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِالظَّالِمِينَ وَلَتَجِدَنَّهُمْ أَحْرَسَ النَّاسِ عَلَى حَيَاتٍ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا يَوَدُّ أَحَدَهُمْ لَوْ يُعَمَّرْ وَعَلْفَ سَنَةٍ وَمَا هُوَ بِمُزَحْدِهِ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ أَنْ يُعَمَّرْ وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ قل من كان عدو لجبريل فإنه نزله على قلبك بإذن الله مصدقا لما بين يديه وهدى وبشرى للمؤمنين من كان عدو لله وملائكته ورسله وجبريل وميكال فإن الله عدو للكافرين ولقد أنزلنا إليك آيات بينات وما يكفر بها إلا الفاسقون أو كلما عاحدوا أحدا نبذوا فريق منهم بل أكثرهم لا يؤمنون ولما جاءهم رسول من عند الله مصدقا لما معهم نبذا فريق من الذين أوتوا الكتاب كتاب الله وراء ظهورهم كأنهم لا يعلمون واتبعوا ما تتل الشياطين على ملك سليمان وما كفر سليمان ولكن الشياطين كفروا يعلمون الناس السحر وما أنزل على الملكين بباب الحاروت وماروت وما يعلمان من أحد حتى يقول إنما نحن فتنة فلا تكفر فيتعلمون منهما ما يفرقون به بين المرء وزوجه وما هم بطارين به من أحد إلا بإذن الله ويتعلمون ما يزرهم ولا ينفعهم ولقد علموا لمن اشتراه ما له في الآخرة من قلاق ولبئس ما شروا به أنفسهم لو كانوا يعلمون ولو أنهم عامنوا واتقوا لما سوبة لما سوبة من عند الله خير لو كانوا يعلمون صدق الله الذي One eye number 102 is like one whole page is one eye 102 And we have explain what the Bani Israel did all the time after taking the covenant, promising they are going to follow the Torah. For a short while they said yes and then afterward they completely forget what the commitment was there, what they promised to Musa and so on and so forth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is again saying this, وَإِذْ أَقَذَنَ مِيثَاقَكُمْ وَرَفَعْنَ فَاقُكُمُ الطُّورِ خُذُوا مَا عَطَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَّةٍ وَاسْمَعُوا قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَعَسَيْنَا وَأَشْرِبُوا فِي قُلُوبِهُمُ الْإِجْلَ بِكُفْرِهِمْ قُلْ بِئْسَ مَا يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِهِ إِيمَانَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُعْمِنِينَ The background here is when Musa al-Islam took some of the people of Bani Israel they wanted to 
to go along with Musa Salams to the mountain, the tour, and then when they were there, first of all they asked, when they heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say that we would like to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our own eyes. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately sent a cloud that killed all the Bani Israel who were present there. Then Musa asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these were representatives from the Bani Israel who came to listen to what you are talking because people thought that I am just telling them something which is not true. So I brought these people to witness that I am hearing voices from you. But if they are killed, if they die, they will think that I took them and killed them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please give them life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them life again. And after that, when they heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them orders and asked them to pledge to say that we are going to follow the Torah and they kept quiet. Then a mountain was raised above their head and the voice came, unless you promise you accept to follow, otherwise this mountain is going to crush you. And at that time they said, yes, we promise we are going to follow the commandments given in Torah. Then the mountain was moved. Then Allah SWT is explaining them that you made this commitment when the mountain was on your head and you, you placed, you promised that you are going to follow. But as soon as the mountains were raised, you went back to the other people from the mountain and explained to them this has happened. And the majority of them, they said, we accepted that but we are not going to follow what we promised. This is what he's explaining. When we made a covenant with you and raised the mount above you saying hold firmly to what we have given to you and hear our commandments. In response, what they, they said, we hear but we disobey. Once they came out from that mountain area, they came along and told them, yes we hear and we promise but we are going to disobey. And worship, and worship of the calf was made to sink into their hearts because of the rejections of the covenant. This is very, very important for us to remember. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created only two creations who have got the choice to accept or reject. Only two creations. The angels have not given the choice. They are in the tr today's language, in the computer language, they are programmed to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They cannot be disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only two Ins and jinn are given the choice. I'm going to tell you just to Surah Zariyat, that is chapter number 51. Surah Zariyat, chapter number 51. Ayah number is 56. Page is 835. It's better, I, yes, it's better to tell you the page. 835. The reason why I'm saying is that to support what you are telling in Al Quran al Karim because Al Quran al Karim is the best tafsir of Al Quran al Karim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for one ayah explains in some other ayah what he is telling to us. 8.35 Yes, I number is 56. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that وَمَا قَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given the choice to be obedient or disobedient only to two communities that is ins and jinn. Can I also ask you 
to open page number 948 and number 7, 8, 9 and 10. Audhu billahi minash shaitan. Wa nafsim wa ma sawaha fa alhamaha fujurha wa taqwaha qad aflaha man zakkaha wa qad qaba man dasaha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I have given you a nafs but I am giving you guidance as well and the nafs is going to decide and push you to be obedient or disobedient. So you have to be very careful. The nafs is always telling you to be disobedient but your conscience is going to tell you to be obedient. But nafsim wa sabwaha and inspired it with knowledge of wrong. Okay, wrong and right. When nafsi mama sabah, fa fa alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha. So in spite of it, is a knowledge of wrong and right. Had aflaha man zakkaha. Indeed, he succeed who purifies his own self. Wa had qaba man dasaha. Indeed, he fails who corrupts his own self. So this is the nafs is with us always trying to make us to be disobedient. The sins, attraction of the world are there and this nafs is going to say that you have come for a short while into this world, there are so many distractions going on, why don't you take and enjoy this world? What is the point of being obedient and leave the whole worldly pleasures. The pleasures are there to enjoy it. This is what the nafs is keep telling us. And what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling that? Because these Bani Israel, they listen to their nafs. They worship the cow. When Musa salam, the prophet is there, he's taking them away from Pharaoh and asking them to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has gone to get the commandments from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Bani Israel and immediately what they do is instead of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started worship the cow. And the shirk is the highest sin on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna shirka la zulmun azeeb The highest sin on earth is the shirk. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us so many times the first thing one, one is to do is not to have partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tu shirik billahi. The first thing, most important thing for us to obey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not to commit shirk. And they committed shirk. And after that, because of commitment of shirk and love of this world, obedience became very difficult for them. Even when they promised under the mountain, they came back and they said, we made the promise but we want to disobey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَتْ لَكُمُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَالِسَةً مِنْ دُنِي النَّاسِ فَتَمَنَّا وَالْمَوْتَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ What they used to say that the Bani Israel are the chosen people because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told one time إِنِّي أَضَّلُّكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ He has made us superior to all the humanity. So we are the chosen people and the paradise is for us. They had firm feeling that the paradise is for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that if the paradise is for you, don't you want to go to the best place which is the paradise? For that, you can't enter unless you die. But would you like to die? Do you have a feeling to like the death that is between you and the paradise? Because they have done such wrong things in this world, they haven't prepared for the Akhirah, that's why they don't want to die. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that قُلْ إِنْ كَانَتْ لَكُمُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ إِنْدَ اللَّهِ قَالِسَةَ مِنْ دُنِ النَّاسِ فَتَمَنَّا وَالْمَتَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Say, if the last home with Allah is for you alone and not for anyone else of mankind, then invoke death if you are sincere. وَلَنْ يَتَمَنَّهُ أَبَدًا بِمَا قَدْنَمَتَ عَيْدِهِمْ اللَّهُ عَلِمْ 
But what happens is because of what say if the last tomb is there, ask for that, but when they will never invoke death because of what they did and Allah knows the evil doers. Because what happens is if if you want to travel to another country and if you have purchased a property there and your business there and you moved all your money there into that place, you will love to go to that place to settle down. But all your commitments are here and somebody asks go there and leave that place, you will say I have no interest there because everything that belongs to me is here. People ask Isa salam that why do we hate death and why we love to be here? He said because all your belongings are here. You haven't sent anything there. If you have sent there, then you will love to go there. One time it happened, and uh, this is the time of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. was away, and somebody sent a prepared meal with a whole lamb and send it to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam house. Aisha Razila Talan was there, and this was brought to her. And before Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, the beggars and people asking for food came, and she asked the slave or the servant was there to cut a piece and give it to them. And people keep asking and gave it and gave it and gave it till only one shoulder was left. When Rasulullah came, Aisha Razilatullah explained, so and so send a present to us, a cooked whole lamb, but the only thing is people kept asking. So I gave it, only one shoulder is left for us. Rasulullah smiled and said, Oh Aisha, no, the rest of the lamb has been saved for us except this shoulder which is left here. Because whatever we have given is saved for us, for the Akhir. So whatever you give in the way of Allah, that is saved for you in the Akhirah. So whoever sends the belongings to the Akhirah, they are pleased that there is so much bank balance there. We want to move there to utilize our bank balance there. There is not much left here in this world. So that is its explanation of desire. Because if you have sent amounts there into the other bank, you would like to move to that place to utilize the benefits of that place. But if you have everything in here, nothing there, you don't want to go there because there is nothing there. Wallahu alim wa zalim. Wala tajid an nahum aras an nasi ala hayati wa min al lazina ashrak wa yabaddu ahadahum law yu'ammaru alf sana. Wa ma huwa bi mazahdi min al azabi an yu'ammar wallahu basirun bi ma yamalun. Indeed, you will find that they love this life even more than the idolaters. The, more than Mushrikin. The Mushrikin also wanted to live in this world too. Every one of them wishes to live a thousand years. Thousand years. But his prolonged life will surely not save him from the due punishment. Allah is watching over all their actions. قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُولٍ لِجِبْرِيلٍ فَإِنَّهُ نَزَلَ مِنْ عَلَى قَلْبِكَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ مُسَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَهُدًا وَبُشْرَى لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ What happens is, they used to ask Rasulullah SAW, okay, there used to be wahi coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all the prophets, so you are receiving the revelations and wahi, who brings the wahi to you? And Rasulullah SAW said, Jibreel, Gabriel brings me. They say, oh, we don't like that angel. So why? Because he always brings very hard things for us to do. We want to enjoy this life, but he brings rules and regulations. You can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. This is the whole problem with Jibrail, Nazbillah, that he asked us not to do the things which we want to do here. So we don't want to listen to you. If another angel comes, Mikhail comes, because he gives us good tidings about the worlds, the pleasures, and the water to drink, the food to eat, and so on and so forth. 
If he brings the rules and regulations, we'll accept. If Jibreel brings, we are not going to accept. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling that because you had animosity at Jibreel, قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوَ لِجِبْرَيْلِ فَإِنَّهُ نَزَلَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ بِيَتْنِ اللَّهِ مُسَدِّقَ لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدِي وَخُدَ وَمُشَرِ الْمُنِينَ Whoever is the enemy to Jibreel, for surely he has revealed it by Allah will to your heart, confirming what was revealed earlier and the guidance and good tidings to the believers. Because Jibreel Salaam, he does not bring rules of his own. He is just conveying what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered. Because same thing with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah is not telling anything of his own and the Jibra is not telling anything from his own. He is just conveying what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told him to reveal to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever is an enemy to Allah his angels, his messenger to Jibreel or Mikael, then surely Allah is enemy to the unbelievers. Who is enemy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? His prophets and angels. Allah said that in return, I am the enemy of those people who have this type of feeling. We have sent down to you clear signs, none will deny them except the evil doers. Is it not so that whenever they make a covenant, a party of them rejects it? Most of them do not believe. And now, when a messenger has come to them from Allah, confirming their own scriptures, some of those to whom the scriptures were given, cast off the book of Allah behind their backs, as though they know nothing. وَلَقَدْ عَلِمُوا لَمَنِ اشْتَرَاهُ مَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَ مِنْ قَلَاقِ وَلَبَئَسَ مَا شَرَوْ بِهِ أَنفُسَهُمْ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ This is long ayah, one page of ayah. I'm just going to give the explanation before I go for the translation. At the time of Sulaiman al-Salaam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the jinn visible to the humanity. Otherwise the jinns are hidden from the human beings. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them slaves to Sulaiman alayhi salam and they were visible to the human beings and they used to work with human beings listening and obeying Sulaiman alayhi salam. Majid al-Aqsa in the beginning was constructed and the jinn were the ones who constructed the foundation and the walls and the roof of Majid al-Aqsa. Constructed at the time of Sulaiman alayhi salam. And the human beings and the jinn used to work together. They used to talk to each other. And the jinn knew magic words. And the human beings respected the prophets because of miracles. What are miracles? Which is out of the human capabilities. Miracle and mojiza is something like Musa salam threw the stick and the stick turned into big snake. He used the stick to depart the water and the water cleared and the big path was made. So the Bani Israel is looking at the mojiza of, of Amiya salam. When something unnatural, unusual happens, they say this is from the prophets and Ambiya and we have to follow these people. But the angels had all magic things as well. And they were showing things which are unnatural and not done by the human beings. And suddenly the Bani Israel were affected and they started things 
are these prophets? Should we obey them? Because they are showing miracles to us. And then they thought, when they Jin explained, this is not Mojidah, this is magic. Then they thought, oh, in that case, Nawazubillah Sulaiman is the highest magician. He is also doing magic. Because he can speak to the language of all the animals. And he is he has got a carpet, he sits on this carpet and this carpet flies from east to west in seconds. So he is a magician. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Harut or Marut, two angels, to explain to the Bani Israel of that time, saying that Mojiza is different, magic is different. And they brought the magic words to Bani Israel to say that, look, even if you recite these things, you can do the magic. So don't think that the jinn have got the magic, you can do the magic yourself. So the Harut and Marut started telling them the words which Bani Israel looked at those written words and when they used to read those words and after that if they wish anything that was happening. But the Harut and Marut explained, we have just brought these words to explain to you to differentiate between Mojiza and magic. This is only to use for good purposes. If you use for bad purposes, for sinful activities, then you are going to be in trouble. We told you that this is a test for you. This is given to you to do good things, not bad things. It is like water. The water is to save us. But if you force somebody into the water and drown him and force his head down in the water for half an hour, that person is going to die by suffocation. But you cannot say this, no, the water is responsible for this death. No. The water is to save life, but you can misuse the water. The science is there to utilize it for benefit, but you can use the science to cause troubles and calamities. Atomic power is there. It is a source of energy. But if you make an atomic bomb, you can cause destruction. So it can be used for good, it can be used for bad. So Harut and Marus explained that these are the things, if you read these, you can use it for good purposes. But if you use it for bad purposes, this will become a trial for you. Because Allah SWT has given this benefit to utilize for good causes, not to use for bad things. But as soon as they learn, then they decided they used to use this magic for everything they liked. The most important thing was they, they saw some good lady going around, married person, and they said, we want to use it so that there is a difference between husband and wife and divorce and we'll take charge of this lady. And they used to use this thing. Because, you know, the shaitan itself is one person. But throughout the world, he has got his slaves. They are called shayateen. With each human being, there is a shaitan to misguide. And we cannot be saved from the share of shaitan unless we take the protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This shaitan is there and shayateen are there. Every evening, the big shaitan asks all his slaves and servants to join and give me what you have done today. Somebody comes and says, I ask this person and force him to drink wine. He said, okay, okay. The person comes, I ask them to do some robbery, stealing and so on and so on. He said, okay, remove it. He said, oh, I force somebody to commit adultery. He said, okay, okay. And the one person, he said, what did you do? Oh, I caused divorce and difference between husband and wife. He said, come on, come on, come and sit next to me. You are the best of all these I've sent them. Because what happens is marriage and family life is the basis, the foundation of humanity and of the whole world. The society begins from the house. 
it moves to bigger area, a village, a town, a community, a country, and enlarge the whole of the world. But the foundation is the house, husband and wife and children. If they are properly guided, if they have guidance and love and affection and care in the house, that house becomes like a star to the angels from the sky. And that is the foundation. One good house, the husband and wife loving and caring and helping each other and guiding the children to be righteous. They are successful in this life and they will be successful in the hereafter. Because in one of the hadith he says, if the family is good, obedient, loving and caring in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to unite them in Jannah as a family to live together. This is very, very important for us to remember. And that is what they did, was the first thing what they did. They learned this magic and this magic they started having differences between husband and wife, dividing them so that they split the husband from the wife and they wanted to do whatever they like. And they, Harut and Manu explained that this is the fitna or a trial for you. We have come to give you this magic so that you should know that you can do this magic. But what the mojiza is there, mojiza you cannot do, only the prophets can do the mojiza. So that should not be affected by the jinn saying that, oh, the, the jinn are doing this thing, so they could be the prophets. No, they are doing magic. And the, uh, the prophets do mojiza. For you to explain that they are doing magic, we have explained what magic is, is so that you can use it yourself and see this is magic by jinn, not mojiza. So this is the explanation of this ayah. So people should be remember that Harut and Marut, these are the names of two angels. We know the names of few angels. How many angels are there? We don't know the number. Can, you, can I tell you the number of angels? Mind-boggling, okay? The whole of the arsh is full of angels. Somebody is doing khiyam, somebody is doing ruku, somebody is doing sijda, somebody is doing zikr and so on and so forth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends angel into the earth. When rain occurs, how many drops of rain falls in one area? Each drop is carried by an angel from the sky to the earth. So how much water is comes in one area? In the whole area? In the south of England? In the whole of England? In whole of Europe? In whole of the world? Can you imagine the number of angels? So there are so many angels, but we know the names of few angels only. Jibrail, Mikhail, and Malakul Mahoth is there. Israfil is the one who is going to blow the... And then an angel who is responsible as the head of the hellfire. The name, and also Harut and Maru. So we know the names of few angels, but we don't know the names of the, the, so many angels. So, so just Malaika, there are millions and billions and trillions and we can't even count them how many are there and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge shall I tell you how many trees are this area we live in and how many leaves are there on each tree and how many trees are there in South London in England in Scotland and Wales in whole of United Kingdom whole of Europe whole of this continent and whole of world. How many trees are there and how many leaves are there? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives permission for a leaf to fall from the tree. Can you imagine the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He knows each tree. And in one of the hadiths, Allah subhanahu wa came one time out and the people are worried about stalking and he saw the fear on their faces. What are you worried about? They say, we are worried about the Dajjal. The, 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 the and he said, don't worry about the Dajjal. You can ask for the safe. But I am worried about something more, more destructive for you. 
They said, what it is? Then he said, shirk e khafi The hidden shirk, which is very, very difficult. And they asked, what is hidden shirk? He said, in the dark night with no stars, no light at all, pitch dark night, black mountain, and on that black mountain there is a black ant crawling. He said, can you see that ant? They said, no, impossible. Dark night, black mountain, and black ant crawling. He said, shirk e khafi is like this, very difficult to know what it is. Be very careful. Because the shirk, which is evident, you know what it is. You are not we obey somebody else, you are not worship somebody else. But shirk e khafi is very, very difficult to find. And the example was given is, if you are performing, I have said this so many times, performing a nafis salah on your own, and somebody comes next to you, and he started performing nafis salah with you, and this, when he, this person goes into ruku, he does ruku a bit long. Instead of saying subhana rabbi al three times, he's telling five times. And it's your habit is just to say three times, stand up, and in sajda also three times, subhana rabbi al three times, and so on and so on. But you see this, is going to do a longer ruku and longer sajda. And you are seeing he is next to you, and suddenly, the next raka, what you do is, you go into the ruku and say Subhana Rabbi al five times. And in Sajda, Subhana Rabbi al five times. And you finish the salah. And your ruku and Sajda is like the next person. When you finish the salah, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask, Oh my slave, you are worshipping me, you are worshipping me, and you used to do, when you go into raka, three times Subhana Rabbi al to please me. But you increase to five. So these two extra is for who? Not for me. This is for the next person standing it. So in this salah, you have committed a shirk which is called shirk e khafi. It's very difficult to find out. You don't realize. You have done instead of three, five, there is no harm. This is Subhana Rabbi Lazim. You can do three times, five times, seven times, nine times. But your habit is to do three times in the Nafil Salah. But because this person is next to you and he has done seven times or five times, you increase this to five or seven times. So it's three is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever you have increases for the person standing next to you. So you have combined two ilah. You are performing the Salah to please two people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also the person next to you. That's why shirk e khafi is very, very difficult. Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the nur and the hidayin in your heart, then the iman can see the darkest place. The iman can, you can see with the iman that black ant crawling on the pitch dark night on the black mountain if you have got the light of the nur of the iman. And the iman will tell you, this is the right thing, this is the wrong thing. You can see with the nur of the iman, that black ant on the black mountain on the darkest night. So, this is very important for us to remember that all our deeds are to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. And nothing for anybody else. And remember, shaitan is there to misguide us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is told in Surah Al-Mul, Auz bin Allah shaitan. Tabarak al-lazhi bi'ayil al-malku ala kulli shayin qadir. Al-lazhi khalaqa al-mawta wal-hayata li yabluakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. This world is an examination hall. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us to perform the examination in this hall. If you want a degree, you can't get the degree in examination hall. For the degree, you have to prepare and commit your examination good. After you come out of the examination hall, when there is a day of convocation, you are going to get the degree. 
you cannot get the degree in examination hall. So this world is the place to be tested. So we have come here for testing, not to get the degree here, the benefits here. Whatever Allah Subhanahu is giving us in this world, the benefits, you have to be grateful to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But our rewards are for the hereafter. Rewards are for hereafter, not going to be given this world. Because what's the purpose of Jannah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, so, is mentioned and uh, Rasulullah explained Jannah is something which no tongue has explained, no ear had heard, not a single heart and the mind knows what the Jannah is. It is such a thing which we cannot imagine because what happens is if you want to weigh a gold, you go to the jewelers, what have you got? They have got a very small electronic balance. They put the gold and press it and that counts and says so many milligrams and so on and so forth. If you bring loads of tons of iron in a big vehicle and ask the jeweler, could you please weigh these tons of iron rods we have got in this big lorry? He says, sorry. My machine is just to weigh very small milligrams. It cannot weigh these holes. So our mind is only to understand very small things. Our mind cannot ex understand what Jannah is. It's not capable to understand. So that's why our son said that no tongue has explained, no ear has heard, not uh, any heart or mind can think what Jannah is. The lesson from here, and I, I explained this, inshallah we are going to finish this, but what I be going home from these ayah we have recited, that there is shaitan which is going to trick us. And that's why the magic came. And one thing I am going to explain to you, these are the letters brought by the Harut and Marut, it's in a, like a book form. They cannot memorize this. Every time they want to do, they have to refer and read it and then these things used to happen. At the end, when Sulaiman Islam realized what they are doing, he dug the sand and very deep by the jinn and placed these books under and then completely closed that. And this is very, very deep inside under the ground. And the Bani Israel knows that after that they cannot do any magic because those books were hidden. Somewhere near Masjid Aqsa. And what is happening now? They want to find out where these books are. They are excavating near Masjid Aqsa to find out where these books are. And a time is going to come when these books will be found by them. And that is the time of Dajjal. When Dajjal comes, he is going to be born in Iraq. And I, I told you about that famous hadith. The Dajjal's one day is like one year, one day is like one month, one day is like one week, and then after that we, the days are normal. So the one, this is just giving us a clue that doesn't mean that one day will be like one year. When the Sahaba asks what will happen if one day is like one year, how many Salat we are going to perform? He said, no, no, no. He didn't say about how many Salat you have to perform. He said, no, no, perform as the days. But this is a, a hint that the Dajjal's fitna will be three. A period is going to come when the great British Empire is going to be ruling the world for a certain period. And that period of span is like one day is equal to one year. The world will be ruled by Britain and the currency of the world will be sterling pound of Bank of England. Once that one day it goes, then it's going to be changed. One day becomes like one month. Taken by United States of America. Superpower. Dollar is the currency of the world. 
then comes one day equal to one week taken over by Israel and the currency of the world will be the chip and pin of the debit and credit card and then one week finishes then the 40 days are going to come and Dajjal is going to be in the human form and these books will be dug out and then he will read it and then he is going to have power over the skies power over the earth power under the earth he can ask and take away the treasures under the earth he will have control over the food which is growing he will have control over the water see this is what is explained to us by Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this is the hint given to us because uh, people ask uh, Abu Hurairah asks, which of the first was built in the world Rasulullah says Kaaba built by Adam Alayhi Salaam then they said which was the second holy house made then Rasulullah said Majid Aqsa and this hadith is in Sayy Musi and Abu Hurairah asks what was the time between the Kaaba and Baitul Maqdas he said 40 years What is the time between Adam alayhi salam and Sulaim alayhi salam? But go and look in Sahih Muslim. Abu Huraira asked, what was the first haram built? Baitullah. Which was the second? Baitul Maqtas. What was the difference between these two? Rasulullah salam replied, 40 years. It is a hint. When the time of fasting came, the ayah came. You can eat until the time, the white and black threads. And as people came to say that Hatim bin Adi, one of the companions, son of Hatim, his name was Adi. They say Hatim bin Adi has a big pillow, he puts black and white threads behind the pillow and in the night he wakes up and have a look at black and white threads till he differentiates, then he is eating. When he can't differentiate, he stops. Rasulullah Sam called him. When he came along, what are you doing? He said, I've got, he said, black and white thread. And Quran al Karim says that. He said, no, no, no. That is meant black and white thread means the night and the day, not the threads. So these are hints. You should not take them in reality. The shaitan is there take protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan they are just going to mention a couple of things here a'udhu billahi min hamasati shayateen wa a'udhu bika rabbi ayyahturoon this is the ayat ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from even the presence of the shaitan or the shaitan come in you and whenever you want to recite al-quran al-kareem you have to say Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim In this, If you turn to Surah Nahal Page 4 number 98 443 Fa iza qara'ta al-Qur'an fasta'iz billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem When you read the Quran seek refuge in Allah from the accursed devil Verily, no power has he over those who believe and put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even for recitation of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, you have to take the refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
The other things, can you turn to page 420? And number 39 and 40, 420, page 420. Then this uh, shaitan is talking with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala rabbi bima aghwaitani lawu zayyana lahum fil ardi wa la ughwi annahum ajma'een. I'm going to misguide all these people. Illa ibadaka minhum al muqlaseen. He is promising in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is going to misguide everybody, but at the same time He is promising that He is not going to misguide the people who have got ikhlas. Who are mukhlisin? Who perform good deeds only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mukhlis and ikhlas is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only, not anybody else. And who is promising in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Shaitan is promising, I am not going to touch those people who have got ikhlas. So make sure we have got this thing, today's lesson is to take protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan. So what happens? Whole day before you go to sleep, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do tawbah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive whatever you have done during the daytime. Allahumma inni a'udhubuka minna nushirika bika shayin wa anna alamu bihi wa astaghfiruka lima la alamu bihi tubtu anhu tabaratu min al-kufri wa shiriki wa nifaqi wa al-fahshai wa al-ghibati wa al-bahtani wa ismi kulliha wa al-maasi kulliha wa aslamtu wa amantu wa akhulu la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah At the end of the day, ask for forgiveness and confirm about your shahada and iman before you sleep. And what do you say? Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. On the once you put your head, say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Bismillah. I am sleeping. The one who have takes my life and gives my back. So when you sleep, your soul is taken away. You, if you are going to be alive next day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends your soul back in the morning. That's why I say Bismillah. Was, that's why. At the time you sleep, you say, Allahumma bismika amutu wahya. And when you wake up, what say, Alhamdulillah lazi hadan, Alhamdulillah lazi ahyana bad amatina wa ilahi nushu. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me life after the death which I was sleeping. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Allahumma bismika amutu wahya. Then Alhamdulillah lazi ahyana bad amatina wa ilahi nushu. Whenever you do a good deed, whenever you do a good deed, your heart is satisfied, you have done a good deed. As soon as you do a good deed, say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali lazi. And also say, Alhamdulillahi lazi adana li haza wa kunna li nahtadi ya lawla anna hadana Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you gave me the tawfiq, guidance to do this good deed. Otherwise, I would not have done this good deed. So this is very, very important for us to remember. Avoid things which are going to look after the pleasures of this world. Stop the things you like so much to do here. I am telling about internet is the worst thing in this world if you are using it for the things which are not good for you. I explained to you, water is good, atomic power is good, so on and so forth. But if you are using it for something wrong, then that is going to be misguidance and shaitan is going to trick you into these things. Spend your time involving in committing sins and the whole of your time is wasted, which the time which you could have been using for good deeds. So, finally I want to mention about this that in the morning and evening make sure you do the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha first rukuf of Surah Baqarah Alif Lam Mim the first rukuf and then in the middle 
آیۃ الکرسی اللہ 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 القیم حکول آف آیت الکرسی اینڈ آمن الرسول سور فاتحہ فسٹ رکو آف سور بقرا آیت الکرسی لاسٹ رکو آف سورت البقرا دیٹ از آمن الرسول اینڈ آفٹر دیٹ دا تھری خول قل اعوذ رب الفلق قل هو الله احد قل اعوذ رب الناس اینڈ قل اعوذ بالفلق قل اعوذ بالناس دس اول دس خول مارننگ اینڈ ایوننگ قل هو الله احد تھری ٹائمز اف یو ڈو اٹ یو گیٹ دا ریوارڈ اف ریڈنگ دا ہول اف اول قران الکریم قل اعوذ رب الفلق قل اعوذ بالناس وانس یو ڈو اٹ بلو آن یور ہینڈز اینڈ موو دیم اول یور باڈی بیکاز ار رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم یوز ٹو ڈو دیٹ Can the magic affect the prophets? Yes. When Musa a.s. was present, the magicians were there, they did the magic and that affected Musa a.s. He started seeing the snakes when the ropes were moved. They were turned into snakes in front of Musa a.s. And with Rasul s.a.w. If you go and look at the tafsir of Ma'uz Zatayn, قُلْ عَوْزُ رَبِّ الْفَلَقْ قُلْ عَوْزُ بِالنَّاسِ When they were revealed, because a Jewish woman and a man did the sahar or magic on Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that did not affect him from doing any righteous deed, that it caused him to forget things. He used to say, have I done this or not? And this happened a couple of times and then the people said that, no, you have done it. Then he said, well, I think I have done it or I have done it. Then Jibreel Salaam came and explained to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that somebody has done, this person by this name has done this and what happened is they have taken your hairs from you and tied it on the comb and did their magic on these hairs. Then, then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told people to bring that comb with the hairs and he took all the hairs and he recited Qul Awzur Abil Falaq, Qul Awzur Abil Nas and the whole of the magic was destroyed completely. So, for us, every morning and every night, Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Bakhra, Ayat Al-Kursuri, last Ayat of Surah Bakhra, Qul Awzur Abil Falaq, Qul Wallah Wa three times, Qul Awzur Abil Falaq, Qul Awzur Abil Nas, Qul Ya Ayul Kafirin one time as well. Do it, blow it and cover your body. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from shaitan. Make a habit of saying, A'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim all the time. And do bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inshallah, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and save us from the evils of shaitan. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdika na shadu la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiru ka na tubulay. Abdurrahman ibn Jawzi has written a book. The Evils of Shaitan. This big book. How shaitan can trick you. From a person who is, has lowest knowledge to the person who has got the highest knowledge. How he can trick anybody in the world because he has got the knowledge how to trick people. So to trick the person who is not a, an alim who knows all the virtuous deed. If shaitan sends somebody and they say, I am trying to force this person to drink wine. Shaitan says, you cannot trick that person. You have tricked the person according to his knowledge. That's why he says, the shaitan sends ordinary shaitan to ordinary person. To a bit knowledgeable person, to a knowledgeable person. To, to a professor, he sends a professor shaitan to trick him at that level. So this is all explained in this book. It's called Tablis Iblis. And he, Abdurrahman Ibn Jawzi has explained how shaitan can try and cause trouble to us, to misguide us. And nobody, nobody can save us from the evils of shaitan except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why you have to seek protection for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from everything you do. Just last one, one example I'll give you. You know, Ahmad bin Hanbal, you have heard his name one of a high scholar and Ahmad ibn, Ahmad ibn Hamal we heard one of the scholars one of the four scholars you know Hanafi Shafi Hanbali Maliki so Ahmad bin Hamal is one of the scholars Imam al-Fakhi 
He has got his students, his son and children. He was ill for some time and on his deathbed, he is very nearing the death. And his son comes and they, all the people are sitting around him and they realize his breath is going down and down. And one thing is called kharkhara. When you are nearing the death, you are breathing, but at the end, sometime a noise comes out and the, your breath stops for a little while. You breathe again and you stop, breathe again and stop, and it, after one, suddenly you stop breathing. So, when the kharkhara started, suddenly the son came to near him, and he held his hand, and he asked, Father, Father, and he opened his eye, he said, Say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. The father opens his hand and looking and he says, He says, Father, please say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And he says, Two, three times happened. And then the, the children supported him brought a glass of water, gave him some water to sip. He sipped the water and he got a little bit of strength. And suddenly said, my children, don't be worried what I did. They said, we were frightened. Why you are saying? He said, no, you are talking to me to say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Shaitan came and sat next to you. And he said, oh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, you are saved from me now. I can't do anything to you. And I said, no. Till my last breath, you can misguide me. When my last breath is gone, I am saved from your evil. So I said, I know the kalama and I have been reciting in my heart all the time. But when shaitan said, you are saved from me, I can't do anything. I said, no. Till my last breath is there, you can misguide me. No, I am saying la ilaha illallah. So we have to seek protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time, inshallah. Subhanakallah, wa bihamdika, nashadu la ilaha illallah, tanastaghfiru, tanastaghfiru, tanastaghfiru.